Hello everyone, Josh here with Anime Impact, bringing you guys some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and today we have a special video for all of you. I thought it'd be a really cool video. I love making educational videos for tutorials and guides and stuff like that for various games or uh, topics that I cover here on the channel. And today, it just kind of, it's a spur of the moment, but I really want to sit here and talk about what makes a good player in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. How can you become a good player in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links? Now, the first thing to kind of analyze here, which we'll be doing a lot of analyzing in today's video, is I always hear the, the I, I'm not good at the game, I've never played Duel Links before, I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, I'm unfamiliar with a lot of the cards, I'm unfamiliar with the, the effects, I'm lost, I'm confused, I'm very bad at making decks, I'm not good at doing deck builds and stuff like that, and... I can kind of relate with a lot of those concerns because I too was in that situation at one point and I think a lot of us were unless you're like a hardcore TCG player and you followed the game for a long period of time but even if you are a hardcore TCG player this is still kind of a new format of play um, you know with Yu-Gi-Oh because of course there's skills involved the lower life points uh, the deck sizes are much smaller extra deck size are much smaller you have farming for certain cards and stuff like that so it could be a little bit different or tricky for some of you if you're coming from different aspects of the game be it like DS games or order console games or just straight up in real life TCG you know etc etc so definitely a lot of things there to take in and consider and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming however in today's video, we're going to try and help resolve a lot of those issues and try to make you a better player. Now, becoming a better player does not mean you are going to be highly competitive. You're going to be running hardcore strategic decks and just conquering the entire game, conquering the meta, and becoming one of the best. No, that is not what we're talking about in today's video when I mean becoming a good player. What I mean by becoming a good player means you become more self-sustained. Um, like, you don't need as much help anymore you're able to kind of figure things out and learn on the go and adapt and create kind of your own play style your own types of decks using uh cards that are available some of which that are maybe coming out soon may have just came out recently or cards that's been in the game for quite a while and allowing you to do that makes you a much better player m giving you more opportunities to kind of create and you know establish yourself within the game you won't feel as lost You'll even be able to help other players that are new and had similar problems to you, making for a better and healthier community. And some sources that are out there that can kind of get you a jump start right now are DuelLinksMeta.com. You also have uh, Games A. Um, you have the you know the subreddit for you Duel Links. You also have various YouTubers in their Discord groups. You also have the official Reddit Duel Links. Uh, Discord group which you can join uh, there's several groups on social media like Facebook for example that a lot of players can sit there and help each other out and make for a better and healthier community which hopefully will transition into a better playing experience for you your friends your family and whoever else may jump into the game either now or in the future so with all these things said we're going to talk about a few points of interest in today's video and a few things in the game that might get you jump started on your adventure to becoming a good duelist or a better duelist um, and then allowing you to take that shared information and give it to other players that are new and just allow it to continue like a cycle a cycle of duel links Yu-Gi-Oh! duel links love now i'm just playing that's a little cheesy but hey so thanks to konami adding this feature not too long ago we actually did a video and this is kind of what gave me the idea for today's video is I did a video the other day, I think it was actually yesterday or the day before, uh, Duel Links has this new feature, um, it's been out for a couple months now or so, it allows you to actually go into Rank PvP, go up here to Rank Duels Pipe Their Card Ranking, and it allows you to see the top cards being played, I think for the past 30 days or so, I'm sorry, the last 24 hours or so, uh, to kind of give you an idea of what the established meta is and what cards people are using, mostly in Rank PvP. Now, this does not cover the PvE uh, environment of the game. You know, we'll talk about that later on because that's also that's a separate thing to what we're talking about now. So there is definitely two parts to today's video. Become a good player competitively and non-competitively for more of the farming and stuff like that. So don't worry, we will get to that. But as you can see here, you can break it down into the three categories. Monsters, spells, and of course traps. And by the way, shout out to my boy Jinzo. He's moved up to the number two spot. He actually surpassed Amazon Swordswoman <laughs> since our last video. Just wanted to throw that out there. 
But um, so basically, by looking at this list, you can see, okay, these are the popular monsters in the game. These are the popular spells in the game, and these are the popular traps. So wanting to, when wanting to become a good player, the first thing that you want to look at is what cards should you be playing? What type of deck should you be making? What skills should you be using? And how to put all that together in your 20, 25, 30 card decks um, when competing in PvP or against any other players or even just your friends in a duel room or just playing in casual duels for the shits and giggles. How would you approach that and what's the best way to go about doing it? So when you look at monsters, you'll see that we have like Sphere Kree, but we got Jinzo, Swordswoman, we have Witch Raider, Anki, you have other various cards from like Fur Hire, for example, Amazon as Destiny Heroes, etc. etc. So just by looking at that, you can kind of look at each card. You can click on them, and it'll tell you what the card type is. It'll tell you what their level is, what their attack and defense are, and what their effects are. So when you're looking at trying to build a deck, if you look at enough of these top cards, you can start seeing that there's some kind of synergy between some of them. So, for example, there's one, two, uh, we'll see, yeah, there's two Amazonas in the top 10 for monsters. And if you include Tiger, that's three in the top 13. So, and you go by their name, you go by their effects, and you can quickly notice that those three cards go together. So, from a newer player, you're thinking, okay, so those three cards go together, so I should be making a deck revolved around Amazonas because that seems to be the majority of what that deck is about. So, let's take a look. And when you click a card, you'll see on the left side, not in this view, but when you go into your actual deck editor, you'll actually see a little button that actually lets you click to see what cards kind of go with that card, what that card is related to, what it works with. And then you'll start seeing the other variety of support that's available in a game for that type of deck that you're building. So now, um, in a way, Konami's kind of given you a, a good generalized idea of what other cards that you can run with these cards. So now you're off to the races on building your first deck. And you know that this deck is going to be somewhat decent at least, or if, at the very least it's popular. So it must be working for other players because, of course, of the ranked uh, dual popular card rankings that we have here. So it's a very cool feature. It's a very powerful feature. And you can use it... Um, as much as you possibly want and it updates every 24 hours so you're always going to know what the up-to-date cards are being used in the game and it's very cool it's a nice little feature i'm glad they added that because so it definitely gives you an idea and helps you out and it also showcases what cards you may need to try and look for in certain boxes with your gems that you have to try and build those certain decks um so it's a very valuable resource, I feel, for newer players especially uh, that are lost and confused, especially when they're trying to set up you know, different deck builds and what kind of decks work and what don't, especially if they're not a part of the various sources that I gave you earlier in the video. It's definitely a helpful tool. And you can do the same thing likewise with spells and traps. You can see what spells are the more popular ones. You can go in, click on each one, see what they do, and then you can start getting the mind thinking, get the brain working here. You know, get all the engines going, um, and then you can start thinking, okay, what could combo with this? What could combo with that? And now you're going back to the monsters thinking, okay, these are the cards I want for my deck. Do any of these spells work with that deck? And then you start plugging those in, and then you can work your way through the traps. And before you know it, you have an established 20 card deck that may be to your liking. But before you do any of this, you want to backtrack and think about what type of play style do you want to play. Are you an aggressive player? Do you like to end duels quickly? Are you short on time? Are you limited on time? Do you want to go in and win duels quick and get out? Um, and then you, know, you also have another problem with your gem resources. How many gems do you still have left available that you can farm up? So you can go back and search out certain cards. Do you think? Do you feel comfortable with RNG that you're going to be able to get these cards? Especially if you're not a paid-for player, you're more of a free-to-play player. And then you have, you know, are you a stall player? Do you like to play slow and grindy, drag the duels out, play more defensively, and let your opponent uh, kind of go in and make mistakes, and you take control of the game? Um, you know, you got to kind of think about all those things before you actually go into your initial deck build. What kind of play style are you? And that'll, and with that and the deck build itself, that'll completely all lend um, the information that you need for you to go in and figure out what skill you now want to play. 
Now, skills are heavily dictated, I feel, in my opinion, by what type of deck you're making because some skills work for certain decks and some don't. So you definitely want to go through and check that out. And Konami added another cool little feature. Of course, you won't see some of these things in a video because my layout is covering the sides up. But if you guys are playing um, on PC, for example, if you actually go to a character from the wheel screen here, uh, it'll actually show the skill list on the right side. And for example, with Zane, Zane has balance, cyber style, draw sense dark, uh, draw sense high level, draw sense light, fatal five, grit, heavy starter, life point boost, alpha, beta, you know, etc., etc. And you can just click the side and it'll actually show you all the characters that also share that same link, if any. And it'll tell you at the uh, in the top there what the skill actually does. For example, life poo uh, life life yeah life boost guys. Life point boost alpha increases your starting life points by one thousand. So you know if you start with four thousand normally, this skill will allow you to start with five thousand. So if you're working with a deck that's built around life point gain or uh, cards that get their effects off while you have more life points than your opponent, then this might be a skill that you want to use. So. It all kind of just kind of goes uh, hand in hand on how you want to approach your deck style. And that's pretty much all you really need to know going forward for deck builds. If there's any other information or little things you need here and there when building your deck, like I said, you can use any one of the listed sources that I gave you at the beginning of the video. There's so many out there, and by now, a lot of you have probably already associated yourself with some kind of Duel Links community, be it on Facebook, YouTube, Discord, Reddit, or, you know, etc. So that all kind of takes into account on how to become a better duelist when building a deck. But now what happens when you've already built your deck, you have your skill, and now it's time to play a duel. It's time to try and see how far you can push it. Now a lot of people think that you need to be king of games to be relevant. That is very, very untrue. A lot of us can agree that once you've achieved king of games one time, achieving it again and again and again really is no longer special or has any meaning outside of collecting 200 gems, which at the end of the day is only four packs, but still that's four packs. And if you're free to play, those do add up, especially if you are saving for, you know, the next box set, especially if you get the leak from me or another YouTuber um, and you're excited for what's to come, you definitely want to grind out as many gems as possible. So that is something you also want to take into account. And then, like I said, you do not need to be key in games to be considered a good player in this game. Uh, some may disagree with me and say that you have to be key in games or nothing else. That's completely false. That is not the way to go about it. That's how you create a cancerous community. No, guys, you do not need to achieve king of games to be considered a good player you need to be personally you need to personally feel like you're a good player by achieving whatever your personal goals are if your personal goal is to hit king of games then so be it but if your personal goal is to just take a certain deck that you built for the first time completely by yourself without looking at anybody else's uh, deck list or maybe you're just taking some of your uh, friends or other players uh, deck list as a uh, kind of like a, uh, a reference a reference sheet and you use that to construct your own deck and you still do well with that deck that is what I call personal power and I feel like that's what you need to achieve in this game I think that's what's all about achieving your personal power and what I mean by personal power is you're basically achieving your personal set out goals not somebody else's you're not playing your game by somebody else's dictation no you are playing your game the way you want it to be played and you're achieving whatever you personally set out to achieve and once you've done that you have a sense to become a good player in your own right other players may not call you a good player but that does not matter it's not other uh, other players opinions that matter it's your own and if you feel that you've accomplished what you wanted to you have essentially become a good player in your own right and that for me is it's a success that's good i'm glad because that creates a healthier player base that keeps people wanting to come back for more that keeps people wanting to spread the game and share it with their friends and family getting more players in and that creates a healthy attitude for the game the game already has enough issues of its own it doesn't need the players to create more for it it already does that just enough by itself so so really the kind of the point here is i'm trying to make is you want to create personal power for yourself. You want to establish yourself in the gaming environment for Duel Links in a way that benefits you. And that, in a way, kind of benefits everyone else as well. So it's really, really cool to see that. Um, just because a meta is established one way or another by looking at the cards like we showed earlier, 
you can still actually look at those cards and think, okay, what can counter these cards? And now you can start creating like counter meta, or you can start creating rogue decks, something that you feel that might be strong against the cards that are being most mostly used on the popular list, and you can try and find a way to counter them. You can build a deck with your friends and family or whatever your community you're a part of and start building decks that can counter those cards, and then you can have fun playing that way as well. There's so many different ways you can play in this game. You don't have to be a meta slave. You don't have to be a copy-paste player. No, you can actually go off. Even if you lack imagination, you can kind of still, in a way, push forward something that you've made on your own and be successful with it, even though others may not see it that way. It's all about creating personal power. So that's one thing that you can do. Uh, like I said, if you can get to a platinum, if you can get the legend, or if you get the king of games consistently, you know, of course you're going to be considered a good player. But even if for those players that are not as competitive, just achieving the, the rank of gold could be a personal achievement for you, and that is a win. That is a win for the community. That's a win for you, and that's just the way it should be. I don't feel that we should all just be going, oh, my God, if you don't get king games, you're a shitty player. Oh, you got to get king games, or we don't care what you say. No, that's not the way the game should be handled at all. That's just a cancerous community. That's just, you know, an elitist community. We don't want elitist community. This is Duel Links. This, you know, this ain't MLG. We're not doing some kind of crazy next level competitions or whatever. All the money in the world's on the line. No, you can save that for the KC Cup. That's for those types of players. That's fine. Outside of that, no, we don't need that kind of attitude. We don't need an elitist attitude. We just need to enjoy the game, have fun, and play. If you are successful, if you win some games, you lose some games, as long as you're having fun, that is the way of being a good player, in my opinion, in this game. So we've now talked about deck creating decks, how to kind of see what cards that are popular are, so it gives you a good foundation, I guess you could say, on building your first deck. Um, you can also look at the certain cards in the game and think about, okay, what can counter them. You can look at through the card catalog, see what's all available. You can go through all the select filters. There's, there's various filters. You can filter by different monster types. Uh, you can filter by spell types, trap types. You can filter by what those cards can do effect-wise, not effect-wise. You know, damage life points, regain life points, uh, destroy, remove, etc., etc. So there's a lot of things you can do. And a filter system that allows you to kind of build your deck the way you want it to be built and you can run it the way you want to run it and like i said at the end of the day all of it revolves around you you are the player you are in control you make the decisions you decide what you want to do and then rng will do everything else so that's kind of what i wanted the main part of the video to be about was just kind of establishing the fact that you don't have to be an elite player to be considered a good player. You don't have to be an everyday KOG to be a good player. So now that we've got all that out of the way, there's probably some other things that you guys want to know in becoming a good player in Duel Links. How do I get certain cards that are not available from just picking them up in a box? Well, then you'd want to become uh, a farmer. You'd want to farm the game, grind the game, uh, play PvE, you know, whatever you want to consider it. Um, so now you need to establish yourself in a more creative way. I feel once you start creating your own farm decks, I feel like that inspires you to create better PvP decks. And what I mean by that is I feel there's one key thing to this game that a lot of people overlook. And it's the actual enjoyment of creating a self-created farm deck that works that maybe other players have not done yet. Or they've done it to an extent, but you took it to another level. And this is where I feel the real imagination process, the creative process, really takes uh, hold of you in this game. And really allows you to explore new possibilities that you probably never thought of imaginable before. And why I say that is because there's various farm decks out there that have not been discovered yet or your your different types of back row that you could run with certain types of monsters or or vice versa that can make certain farm decks we've already had better than they were in the past um and it's cool because you could sit there and think okay so this player has so and so deck these are the cards that he has how can i how can i counter those cards and still get my 8000 dual assessment so it makes you think, it makes you wonder, and then the engines start turning again. Um, and similar to doing your deck builds for PvP, you now have a deck build that you can run with various different characters. 
and those decks will never go out of style because those characters are kind of locked into those decks at whatever current level you're playing against, be it level 10s, 20, 30s, or 40s, and probably soon in the future at level 50. So it allows you to sit there and create new and uh, ingenious ways to farm those players even maybe faster than you could before, maybe more effectively than you could before, more consistently, and it allows you to really explore new ideas and possibilities, like I said, probably a million times by now. And I feel like that really jumpstarts your creative edge in this game. And you can actually take that experience and push it over to the PvP aspect of the game. And then you're now you're thinking of the game from a new perspective. And now you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's cards in the game that I didn't even know could be used for this and this before. But now that I've played with these cards doing, doing farming... Um, I've kind of had a new lease on life here, and my imagination is just running wild, and there's so many things I want to try out in PvP, and it's it's good to see, and you'll see a lot of players that do that already to this date, uh, especially taking advantage of the when you become a new rank, you can't de-rank from like Plat 1, Legend 1, you can't get out of Legend or Plat now, so people like to explore new decks and try things out, you'll notice a lot of players doing that, and that's kind of what I want you guys to do as well, especially if you're a new player. Now, this entire video is mostly dedicated to the new players or players that need a lot of help and have a lot of questions or confused. Um, and this is kind of what I wanted to clear up, and hopefully I've done a good job of that. I know we've rambled on quite a bit, but I hope that a lot of you kind of understand where I'm coming from and what I want you to try and go out there and achieve for yourselves and become a good player. I'm not saying become an elitist. I'm not saying become you got to win, 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 win. You got to have a 99% win rate. No, no. You can have a, a win-loss rate under 50 percent and i still will consider you a good player if you've accomplished your personal goals and achieved for, and achieved your personal power within the game and you've done what you set out to do and if you have done that it's a win for me it's a win for you it's a win for the entire community of Yu-Gi-Oh! duel links and with that said i think i'm going to end the video there i think we've kind of covered everything i really wanted to it was more or less just a discussion video i just wanted to kind of get my point across Hopefully I did. Hopefully it helps some of you out. And if any of you are lost or confused or need any kind of assistance, I will go over the various sources that you can use yet again. You can use DuelLinksMeta.com, you know, of course, created by Decade and his community. Uh, you also have the Duel Links subreddit on Reddit, which is also very helpful. Um, we have Games A as well, which was probably one of our biggest sources of information for the longest time. Um, we also have various... Uh, Discord groups from all the various uh, uh, YouTubers out there. Uh, just to list a few, uh, there's, of course, Dolan's Links Meta. There's Guns Blazing. There's myself. There's YouTube Dan. There's Watt. There's It's Brad. There's Dance TV. There's, I think, Vise. Uh, there's so many. DZ has even been really getting into Dolan's Links a lot lately, and he's really good on the TCG side of things. So, I mean, there's just so many out there that can help you there's so many sort resources there's so many communities even shady penguin uh he's a great guy so lots of things that you guys can really do to make yourselves better in the game not feel overwhelmed or feel like you have to do this and have to do that do not ever have that feeling do what you want to do be as good as you want to be break the boundaries go as high as you want to go the sky is your limit and Duel Links is here to hopefully bring all your dreams through. That sounds so cheesy, but that's how we're going to end today's video. I hope you guys all enjoy. Drop a like. Spread the word. Um, this is a big positive video. I haven't had a big positive video in a long, long time. So hopefully uh, this does help a lot of you out. Uh, and, if, and again, if you have questions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Or you can join us in our Discord in the description below as always. Subscribe if you're new. Become an Impact Player today. We are on our way to 10K. We're almost there. So I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Until then, peace.